How's it going, everyone? My name is Derek Afasi. I'm the owner of Afasi Financial Group. Today's topic, I want to discuss with you the difference between an annuity versus CD and fully explain it for dummies. So I don't wish to offend anybody with that title. I just want you to really understand the differences between an annuity, why someone might want to go into an annuity contract, or why they might want to go into a CD contract. Now, the very first bullet point I say is insurance company versus bank. Understand right off the bat, any time that you're seeing an offering through an annuity, and there's multiple types of annuities, I recommend to watch the videos that I have out there of different types of annuities or annuities for dummies, etc. And what it does is it explains the major types of annuities and uh, you know, why somebody would leverage those types of annuity contracts. But understand, the main premise is any time an annuity contract is being offered, it has to be offered through an insurance company. A bank cannot offer an annuity. And other times, you know, many times I get, you know, calls into the office and they say, but, you know, I went to my bank and they said, hey, listen, I could open up this great annuity account and understand that it, there has to be some sort of affiliation with that bank and an insurance company in order to be able to offer that annuity. It's not actually being offered by that bank. And there has to be certain legal reserve structures set up just like a bank CD or certificate of deposit could only be offered through a bank. An annuity contract could only be offered through an insurance company. So an insurance company cannot offer a certificate of deposit. It's two completely separate, um, uh, you know, intervals or two completely separate segments on how those contracts are set up and the legal reserve structures in place. So right off the bat, the number one aspect why somebody wants to go into either a annuity contract or a bank CD contract, either a fixed annuity contract or a bank CD, um, would be for that safety play. They understand that, yes, they're giving up that potential for high rates of return to receive a fixed percentage rate year by year by year. They, this individual just wants to have that certainty that if I'm throwing X amount of thousands of dollars into a specific contract, whether that be an annuity or whether that be a certificate of deposit, that I'm receiving back some sort of interest play you know, each and every year and then my original deposit after that X amount of time has been sufficed. So if we take an example of a typical bank CD, let's say that we have a bank CD and unfortunately in recent times, interest rates are so low and that's typically what determines you know, how good of a rate of return for a fixed annuity or a bank CD is. So if we have a $100,000 bank CD and let's say that the bank is paying 2% for a five-year bank CD, what this means is the $100,000 is going to receive $2,000 each year in interest. It's going to be simple interest, meaning after the first year, you go, that person's going to receive interest credit of two thousand dollars that they could then, um, you know, they, they could then spend for that specific year. So two thousand dollars after the first year, two thousand dollars after the second year, two thousand dollars after the third year, fourth year, etc. So at the end of these five years, this individual would have placed in a hundred grand, would have been in a very safe contract with legal reserve structures, making sure that even if that company went under, that there were certain tiers of safety in place to make sure that would protect that specific contract contract and that specific guarantee. And then after those five years were up, they understand that they had $10,000 worth of interest, and now they're able to walk away with that $100,000 deposit, their original $100,000 deposit. So when we go to the annuity side, and the ones that I'm talking about in particular are known as a multi-year guaranteed annuity. So what that means is the annuity is going to be paying the same interest rate year by year by year. Please review my fixed annuity videos uh, out there, the more recent ones, because I explain the benefits of going with a MIGA as, a, as a, opposed to a just a regular fixed annuity that's going to pr provide that individual a high interest credit the first year and then completely sucker that person and give them bad interest credits the you know every year after that. So with the multi-year guaranteed annuity, what we understand is that you're going to receive that same fixed aspect each and every year going forward. So... One of the major reasons why someone goes with an annuity over a bank CD product is because it's typically going to pay between 1% to 3% higher than how a bank CD is currently being paid. So if we understand that CDs right now are paying 1%, well, a five-year uh, bank CD might be paying you 1%, well, a five-year annuity contract could be paying you right around 3%. So what happens is if we have an annuity and we have that same $100,000 deposit and we understand that this contract is paying 3%, for the next five years, well, this person goes and takes a hundred, a hundred thousand dollars. Well, after the first year, rather than just giving you your interest credit each and every year, you could either have that option depending upon the company to either receive the interest credit in the form of income, or you could defer that, that, uh, that growth each and every year. So that means after the first year, your account 
would grow to $103,000. The next year, it's 3% of 103. The next year, it's 3% of that, you know, 106 and change. So what you're having is a small increments of compound interest that work a little bit more favorable. It gives you a little bit higher growth than how a simple interest. So you can just think of the concept of simple interest versus compound interest. And, um, you know, whether you want to pull out that income that year, that interest credit that year, all depends upon how that contract is designed. Understand you have a lot of different MIGA contracts out there. Majority of them are complete garbage. So the ones that are good, you want to make sure that they have certain stipulations, certain provisions in them that do not completely restrict and hinder your liquidity off of those accounts. But if we were looking off of that same concept of saying, okay, well, just like with the bank CD, this person wanted to live off of $2,000, you know, each and every year and just kind of spend that money. Well, this individual could still have that same aspect um, of saying, okay, well, we're go we have a little bit higher of an interest credit. So maybe that's 3%. So that could be $3,000 each and every year. At the end of those five years, then this person could then walk away with their original $100,000 deposit. So the annuity gives you a little bit more flexibility than a bank CD, but understand it's that same concept of you're placing dollars in there and you're getting a fixed interest rate back. And that's why somebody wants to do it, is mainly for that safety aspect. And maybe they're, they're terrified with what interest rates are going to be, or they're terrified with what the stock market's performing or mutual fund performance. So they just want to have that peace of mind that if they're throwing X amount of thousands of dollars in there, um, that they're receiving some sort of interest credit back. And that brings me to my next bullet point of retirement income planning technique with a question mark. And what happened was in the 80s and the 90s, what you had was double digit interest rates um, or very close to double digit interest rates, um, you know, for these specific types of products. So what somebody was able to do, and it used to make retirement income planning so easy. So if interest rates increase again, you know, in the next five, seven, 10, 15 years, whatever the case may be, this could be a very successful retirement income planning technique. Because essentially, let's say if you had that same five year bank CD, but instead of paying 2% rate of return or 1% rate of return, it was paying 10% rate of return. Well, we understand that with the CD, if somebody took a $100,000 deposit and they placed it in with a bank CD, well, then they're able to receive $10,000 of income each and every year, each and every year, each and every year. So what somebody would be able to do is to set up something known as a laddering strategy. And this is why a lot of bankers were super successful with retirement income planning. And it's really simple. All they did would do is say, okay, well, we understand an individual might have $500,000. So what they could do is ladder this process of saying, okay, maybe a one-year bank CD was paying 5%. A two-year bank CD is paying 7%. A three-year bank CD is paying 8%. A four-year bank CD is paying, you know, uh, 9%. And then a five-year bank CD is paying 10%. So what this goes and shows us is if this person takes, they have $500,000, they could take $100,000, place it into the one-year bank CD, $100,000 in the two-year, three-year, four-year, fifth year, et cetera. So what happens is each and every year, this person would be able to collect all that interest. Then they would have full access to hundred grand, and then they would just repurchase a new five-year bank CD. Because the longer that you keep your money locked up, the higher the guaranteed rate could be based upon both a CD aspect and then an annuity aspect. If you have like a three-year fixed annuity or a five-year fixed annuity, typically the five-year fixed annuity is going to be higher, just like a three-year bank CD versus a five-year bank CD. Because you're leaving, you have more restrictions on your money, on access to that money, um, you could go and get a higher rate of return. But individuals that say, well, I'm still scared each and every year. I want to know that I have access to my money and kind of just play that game of the laddering strategy. What they would do is after that first year, they would receive all those interest credits, then have access to a hundred grand, and then they would go and purchase a new five-year bank CD. So that the next year, the 7% product would give them $100,000 of access again, and they purchase a new five-year bank CD. So that at the, you know, towards after that five years, now they would have 10% rate of returns with easily accessible money. So I hope that that makes sense. Please review that segment. So if we understand that process with retirement income planning, we understand, okay, typically a bank CD, if they're paying you 10%, and we understand an annuity might be paying you about 1% to 3% three, three higher, well, then you could have that same, you know, 10 year, um, that same five-year annuity that would be paying you 13%. As, and that's would make the difference of saying, okay, I'm going to get a higher rate of return on my money going with an annuity as opposed to a CD. Now, you have different legal reserve structures set up, so please be mindful of exactly how that works in your particular area on both a state and federal basis. 
It's mainly the claims paying ability to the company. But yes, there are certain tiers of safety saying if that insurance company goes under, you know, how exactly is my money protected, you know, um, with their different six tiers of safety. So that's going to be the major difference between the two is typically individual will go into an annuity over CD or a portion into a CD, a portion into an annuity just for that safety play and get a little bit higher of an interest rate with that insurance company as opposed to that specific bank. Now, why exactly did this go by the wayside? And it's very simple. It's probably it's because of the problems with interest rates. Let me clear off the screen. If we had a bank CD that was paying, we'll just use an example of like, at like an eight percent, and somebody had a million dollars. Well, we understand if they went and they placed their their money with that CD for exactly five years, they have that specific guaranteed eighty thousand dollars that's coming to them for income for the next five years. After the fifth year, they still have their original million dollar million dollar deposit to then see what the next bank CD is, you know, out there or fixed annuity is out there. So the problem that it has occurred is because interest rates went to all time lows. So now instead of paying 8% on a bank CD or 10% on a bank CD, um, now maybe you're getting 1% on a bank CD for that same length of time for that five year mark. So with that same for that million dollar deposit, now this individual is only receiving $10,000 of income. So therefore, it's forcing them to go more into the stock market and more into mutual funds to try to get that extra performance and prepare for their retirement income plan. So if we use that same sort of example, but now we're utilizing an annuity contract, well, maybe an annuity contract used to pay this individual 13% rate of return for a five-year annuity, a five-year multi-year guaranteed annuity. Well, now a five-year multi-year guaranteed annuity is paying between 25 and 3%. So there's not going to be enough income there to be generated to say, okay, well, in one aspect, I understand that these contracts are very, very safe. Um, but on the other aspect, I can't really leverage it for retirement income planning anymore because I need more money to live off of each and every year. So that's what what happens is the major problems with the interest rates is it has forced individuals to try to keep up with inflation and try to keep up with their retirement income play. And they've been leaving their money susceptible to something known as reverse dollar cost averaging. And these are many retirees, many seniors that are looking to retire. Um, and what it says is it's a very simplistic example that if you leave your money invested in the market or with something variable, will you run a large risk there? If you have something invested with mutual funds, will you have a mutual fund related fee that's there? You have an advisor fee that's there. If, that are, if, you have a wealth, if you're going through a wealth accumulation specialist or a financial advisor, typically they're going to charge you an advisor fee known as a wrap fee. Then you're susceptible to that downward market loss potential. And then the very last one is income. If we want to go one step further, we could also include inflation on there. So if inflation is increasing by in between 3 to 4% in a given year, we'll just say 3% there, your, let's say this individual has a million dollars, he wants to pull out 5% for income, so that's another 5%. Then let's say if in a given year, a very realistic example would be you know, a 10% loss. In 2008, the average portfolio lost 57%. So let's just say that, the, that an average portfolio lost 10% in a given year, and then you're paying a 1.5% or 1% advisor fee, another 1% in mutual fund related fees, all of these negatives are working entirely against your account. And it's the power of compound interest, meaning that all these negatives could potentially be there each and every year. And what it does is even though you're pulling out the money, you're trying to pull it out on a safe basis of saying, okay, 5%. Well, if you have a dip in your account the first year, well, this would have shown that it was a dip of 10 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1 would have been a minus 20% loss, even though you only only pulled out 5% that year. So, you know, this is something that it's, it's so powerful to understand because if we could eliminate majority of these negatives and make sure that you're set up the proper way, well, maybe you might want to go into a fixed annuity because it's paying you a higher interest rate than a bank CD. Or maybe you want to have something that's going to still give you that safety aspect, but will gain whenever the market goes up and gain 0% whenever the market goes down. So it'll allow you to have better accumulation in there without running that risk of the reverse dollar cost averaging risk. So, and that brings me to my very last point it says lifetime income planning typically when we deal with a, an individual we understand that there's three things that every person needs to figure out before they retire or three things they need to figure out if they're already retired and how to stay retired forever and those three major things are income sources meaning that they want to make sure that they have plentiful amount of income sources going to them, whether that's through Social Security income, whether that's through pension income, and then that very last thing is through savings, how to make sure that they're receiving lifetime income specific to what their budget is 
um, you know, each and every month, each and every year to the day that they pass away. If they have those income sources are, are set up properly, let's say somebody has expenses of $50,000 in a given year, maybe they have social security income of 25000 maybe pension income of another 15000 so we understand that that's forty thousand dollars of income going to them, but their expenses are fifty grand. Well, how are they able to pull out that savings properly? And we set up different things uh, with proprietary strategies through our retire sharp planning system that leverages all the different contracts out there, all the different fixed type contracts, making sure that an individual has peace of mind to place the smallest amount of dollars into these types of plans, whether that's in an annuity contract, not necessarily a fixed annuity. It would be more of the hybrid annuity. It's a fixed index annuity with an income rider to make sure that you're so your income sources properly for that peace of mind so that you can accentuate your emergency funds. And those emergency funds, you could leave a majority of it in liquid cash, you could have other portions, and you can invest that into the market and take on that risk of reverse dollar cost averaging. And then the very third aspect is inflationary protection, making sure that you're not only receiving income right now from your savings, but then you're stepping up every few years off of income, you know, properly in something known as a laddering strategy, uh, making sure that you're, you're sufficing your goal properly and successfully uh, with all the top carriers out there. So if you found value in this video and you want to see some better options on either how to get a higher rate of return than what the current low interest rates are doing, um, you, could, uh, you could accomplish this goal through both a type of index annuity or you could accomplish this goal through something known as a market link CD. And we could explain those in full detail for you. But at the bottom line, it's all about what are your specific goals? Um, what are the gaps within your specific plan and then how to accomplish those goals successfully? And, you know, we use pretty much every single carrier out there. Uh, and then we have proprietary strategies that each time somebody calls in, on average with our retire sharp planning system, it's a proprietary strategy. We go through over 1200 different product scenarios and strategies before we uh, give our top three recommendations um, you know, for, for each individual. So we are A plus rate on the Better Business Bureau. We've always had very good reviews. We've never had any complaints. And it's because of this methodical process. Feel free to give our 1-800 number a call at any time. We are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Because of the volume that we get into our office on a national basis, we want to make sure there's always somebody answering the phones to help you out best way possible, speak with a specialist. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Retire Sharp, so you could have access to the most updated videos. We try to update these videos you know, each and every week to see what's going on with the economic trends. And, um, you know, we try to at least, or at least I try to educate you guys as simplistic as I possibly can. Um, and, you know, that that's essentially what we have with our retire sharp uh with our retire sharp channel on youtube so feel free to subscribe to that at any point in time and you have access to those videos and i want to thank you very much for watching this video and i'll talk soon thank you so much